Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a film and giving it the grindhouse treatment um, to make its poster look like it was made in the 1970s. This entire tutorial was inspired by a really awesome Photoshop Friday competition at somethingawful.com where users were encouraged to take uh, a film and make it look like a really crappy 1970s um, exploitation film. Today I'm going to be uh, working with the film Nacho Libre and transforming its poster from this into something that looks a little bit like this, as if it's been sitting on a wall in, alley, in an alleyway for the last 30 years, and it was a pretty low-budget film to start off with. Just a little bit of a warning before we go any further, this entire tutorial is rated N for noob. Which means, if you've used Photoshop before, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be explaining is fairly basic, and you're probably going to get frustrated. If you're new to Photoshop, then you're probably going to find a lot of the stuff that I have to say fairly informative. The first thing that you're going to need to go out and get are a bunch of high resolution images from your favourite film or the film that you want to give the grindhouse treatment to. When you go to Google image search I really recommend using extra large images simply because we don't want to make um, JPEGs any bigger than we have to um, because you'll, that results in um, quality loss. I also recommend uh, throwing the word um, stills or wallpaper into your search terms because that'll help you find um, large images as well. So these are the images from Nacho Libre that I'm going to be working with today. You'll notice that I have a few pictures of the main characters and the last one really looks like Strong Bad so that's awesome. First up I want you to create a new document in Photoshop. Go to File, New and I'm going to make this an A4 page uh, simply because I'm in Australia and that's you know what I can print on. The key thing that I'm going to do here, no matter which size of paper you choose, change the resolution to 72 dpi and create your new document. Now you're probably wondering why 72 dpi? Well it's standard screen resolution and of course you want to go to uh, you're going to want to show these off to all of your friends on the web and the other reason is that we are working with relatively low resolution images that we've um, taken off the net and whenever you take a small JPEG and make it larger um, it invariably looks really really bad. Admittedly we are trying to create something that looks weathered and worn but we don't want it to look um, unintentionally crappy. Okay, um, first up in Photoshop uh, we're going to create a background. Now there are several ways that you can do this. Um, the third way that I'm going to explain is my preferred way but I'll show you the other ways as well. The first technique that I'm going to demonstrate today um, is using the fill command which is found under the edit menu and in order to create um, a background for your poster you need to basically do this. Um, create a new layer, go to the layer menu, new and layer, give it an appropriate name because when you're working on a big project it can get a little bit confusing, it's important to name your layers. Once you've created that new layer simply go to um, your foreground color and I know which color I'm already going to choose. It's it's a blue color and I've um, simply copied and pasted the code for that color but you can mess around with the color finder and pick something that you like. Um, I'm now going to go to the edit menu, fill, and I'm going to fill this layer with the foreground color. The second technique for um, filling a background layer that I'm going to demonstrate today is using the paint bucket tool which for people who love Microsoft Paint is going to be very very familiar. I don't use it that often myself but if you like it um, you might like to do this. Set an appropriate foreground color, in this case black, and you'll usually find the paint bucket tool hiding behind the gradient tool so if you hold that down for a couple of seconds you'll be able to pick it out and just fill that layer um, with the color you want for your background. Now this is the way that I prefer to create um, a solid color in Photoshop and I do it for a number of reasons. First of all if for some reason sometime down the track I want to make the canvas larger then um, my background is not going to be affected by that process. In, or in order to do this um, simply go to layer, new fill layer and select solid color from the drop down menu. I'm going to call this um, poster background and hit OK and it's going to ask me to choose a color and of course it's already picked up my foreground color so I'm just going to hit OK. You'll notice here that I have a solid background and you can see it over here in my layers palette um, and if I want to change the color of my background at any time I can simply click um, on the um, 
color selector icon in the layers palette. Today we're going to be working a lot with smart objects. This is something that, these are things that came along in CS2 and it means that you can make changes your, to your document um, without um, being destructive. So if you want to change something um, a day or a week down the track, it's going to be a lot easier if you're using um, smart objects and smart filters. Now it's really simple to turn something like our basic background layer into a smart object. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, first of all, um, I'm going to right click and select convert to smart object. And I'm going to get rid of this um, junk layer that I have here just by dragging it to the trash. Now, to edit the smart layer, you simply uh, double click on the icon and it'll explain that you're opening what is essentially a document within a document. And once you've finished making changes to that, you'll need to save it and close it. What you'll notice on my screen is that the original document is open behind the current window. So I'm now working inside my smart document, which is essentially a document within a document. When you've finished working in a smart layer, you'll need to close it and save your changes. Now, a smart object is going to allow us to uh, weather and age the entire poster at once without permanently destroying it. So it's a really, really powerful and, and smart way to work. First up, what I'm going to do to my poster, and remember that I'm working inside the smart layer here, is I'm going to add some titles. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate how to use layer styles here as well, which are really powerful and flexible ways to um, do things to text or images on a layer. Now, when you're adding text to a document, um, you can create a new text box by selecting the text tool from the tools palette. Um, just drag a text box anywhere on the canvas. You can adjust the font size using the option bar at the top of the screen. Whenever I'm working with titles and text in Photoshop, I find it really useful to um, use the following commands to increase and decrease the font size, because quite often I'm not thinking of a specific font size. Um, I just want it to fit in a certain place, so I find myself consistently increasing and decreasing the size of um, the font. Now, in order to do that, you select the text and hold down Command Shift Greater Than. Um, if you're working on a PC, I'm working on a Mac, then you'll need to hold down Control Shift Greater Than. And conversely, to decrease the font size, it's Command Shift Less Than. So it's the uh, the full stop and the comma button. And once you get a little bit of practice at that, you're going to become really adept at uh, making the um, font size uh, bigger and smaller. 